I'm gonna show you how you can save hundreds of dollars every single year on your vehicle maintenance and get a lot longer life out of your engine, your gearbox, and your diffs. And the best news is, it's a lot easier than you might think. So today I'm gonna to be doing a full oil change on the 79 series. So I'm talking engine oil, I'm talking gearbox, differential, and of course, transfer case as well. I'm gonna be doing it at home in the shed. So today we're gonna to talk about why you need to change your oil. Of course, I'm gonna give step-by-step -step process on how to change your oil, and I'm gonna show you a bunch of tips along the way so you don't make a mess. You're gonna need a socket set, a couple of drip trays, a tool to get your oil filter off. For a 79 series, I need a socket like this, and for most cartridge style filters, you need a tool just like this. For the diffs and transmission, you'll need to pick yourself up an oil syringe like this one, because you're getting oil into hard to reach areas. They're fairly affordable, and something you'll use regularly, so it's a good purchase. As always, safety first. Before you do any work in your car, make sure it's secure and safe to do so. You don't want to be spending the money you've saved on labour being spent on hospital bills. You need to make sure you get the right grade of oil for your engine driveline. Watch how easy this is. There's this great website called regotooil.com.au. Select your state, put your rego in, and it shows the exact oils, brake fluid, coolant, everything for your exact full drive. Now my advice is, when it comes to choosing the right brand of oil for your full wheel drive, go with the best quality oil that you can afford. So not all engine oils are made the same, and the better engine oil that you use in your vehicle, well, the longer life you're gonna get out of the running parts of the vehicle. In my opinion, it really is cheap insurance. One of the biggest killers of a diesel engine is a lack of maintenance, and in particular, a lack of oil changes. So when you don't change your oil, the engine will build up a lot of sludge and it creates a lot of wear on moving components inside your engine and will cause them to fail prematurely. Now, if you wanna get 500 plus thousand kilometers out of your engine, and it definitely is possible, you just need to change your oil very regularly. Ask any old bloke who's got an old four wheel drive in really good condition, he's had it for a stack of kilometers. The one thing guaranteed that he'll do is use a really good quality oil and change it very regularly. Your owner's manual will have the recommended service intervals, which is the bare minimum for engine oil replacements. For most modern common rail diesel engines, their oil should be changed every 10,000 kilometers at least. For older engines, I strongly recommend every 5,000 kilometers. In diesel engines, there's so much soot when the diesel is burnt. This is more the case in older vehicles. This is why you'll see diesel engines needing more oil compared to petrols, which need much less. They need to soak up all the soot. Eventually, this soot will build up a sludge. A good quality engine oil is designed to carry all of this soot out of the engine. When you actually do an oil change, you can see how black the oil is in the drip tray. Basically, that's just the oil doing its job to keep your engine clean. However, because of the hard work my four-wheel drives do in uh, off-road and also towing boats, I change my oil a lot more regularly. I wanna give you a quick demonstration of why it's so important to warm your engine up before you change your oil. When oil warms up, it moves a lot easier throughout the engine, just like heating up oil for cooking or melting butter. It'll drain a lot faster and you'll get a lot more oil and soot out. Once you've gone for a drive, park your four-wheel drive on level ground. Some IFS trucks might be too low slung to work underneath, so you may need to put it on axle stands on the front and rear to work on it. Now it's time to drain your oil. Here's my tip for ensuring you don't spill a drop of oil on your concrete driveway or shed floor. What I like to do is put my pan down on some old drop sheets. That way if I miss any oil into the pan, well, it's gonna fall onto the drop sheets and I don't dirty my shed floor. Now I'm just draining the last little bit of oil out of my engine here. Now you can let it drain for pretty much as long as you like. However, if you've got an engine like the Modern Ranger or the BT50 with that 3.2 litre, they really strongly advise that you don't let it drain for more than 10 minutes or else it won't be able to prime itself. So if in doubt, check your vehicle handbook. So now it comes to potentially one of the messiest parts of the job where you've got to change the oil filter over. Now that oil's nearly finished draining out there. I've still got the drip tray under there. I'm gonna make sure I've got all the right tools needed and all the gear needed so I can get in here and do this bit really quickly so I can avoid making a big mess. I've got the new filter. I've also got the filter removal tool. So I'm gonna jump in, change it over, and hopefully I won't make too much of a mess. For the 79, it's got an internal cartridge filter. 
so I need a socket like this to get it out. Many filters can be hard to reach and you might need a tool like this to get it. Keep your drain tray under the filter so oil doesn't leak out all over the ground when you take the filter off. Well, that wasn't too bad. I didn't make much of a mess. It's important to line that drip tray up with that oil filter. As you saw, a fair bit of oil comes out of these filters. Now, just be careful because there is a stack of oil inside there and now I've been letting it drip for quite some time. It's pretty good. I'm gonna remove the old filter and I'm actually gonna chuck it into the box where the new one came out of. And when it comes to a 79 series filter, a mistake that a lot of people do make, um, which can prove very costly, is this metal rod here actually supports the filter. Now, there has been cases where people have changed the filter out and um, pulled a bit too hard, and this metal rod here actually comes out with the old filter, they discard that, and they put the new filter on without this. Now what happens, um, of course, then is when your vehicle starts to um, suck the oil through the filter, It'll make the paper filter collapse and um, you won't be able to get any oil up into the top of your engine. It'll cause oil starvation and you would be up for um, a lot of money in an engine rebuild. So make sure that that metal rod is still in there before you fit the new filter. So I've just removed that old O-ring. I'm gonna chuck that into the, where the old filter is. Now this is the new O-ring that came with the new filter. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of oil and just give it a light little coating like that and that'll get a really nice seal and actually make it a lot easier to put on. So just make sure you put it down into the right little groove. Just like that. We'll grab our new filter, just like so. And that is ready to install. So now it's time to fill the engine back up with oil. Before you get started, just double check that you've got your sump plug back in and your oil filter is back in because the last thing you want to do is drain a stack of brand new oil onto your shed floor. So my sump plug is definitely in. I've got a rag at the ready as well and I've actually moved my drip tray and also that big um, drop sheet underneath the vehicle so it's directly underneath here. So if I do spill some, I'm going to get it on that sheet and not on my shiny shed floor. Another little tip as well, when you go to fill it up, and you've got an oil container just like this, fill it up from the side and that'll um, reduce the amount of glugging. So again, just another little tip so you don't make a big mess in your shed. And let's see if we can do this. Full concentration needed. Now this, this engine here takes nine and a half litres worth of oil. So I've checked on the Castrol website and um, so it gives me a pretty good idea of how much oil I'll need inside the um, engine here. This is a 10 litre bottle, so of course it's almost the entire bottle. It's handy how the bottles have these volume markers on the side so you know how much oil you've put in and how much is left in the bottle. Check your dipstick. Run your engine for a few minutes then check it again because the filter needs to fill up with oil too. And just like that your engine is done. It really is that easy. Here's what happens when water gets in a diff. This can happen in river crossings and over time it'll kill your diff. Draining oil from a diff is easy. They've got two plugs here and here. The drain plug will always be at the lowest point and the top one is the fill point. Taking the filler plug out will help the oil flow out faster to make it a quicker job. Here's a great little tip when it comes to changing the oil in your diff. Now, what you wanna do is make sure you always undo the filler plug before you undo the drain hole. Now, you are trying to drain the oil out of here first, there's no doubt about it, but say for instance, you drop the oil out of your diff and you can't undo this filler, this filler plug, plug here, or you might round the bowl or something like that, and you can't fill the diff back up, well, you can't fill your diff back up with oil, and you'll be stranded. So always we'll undo this one first, and um, that'll also give us a chance to see how much oil we do have in that front diff. Grab that straight off like that. Now, the way you can check how much oil you've got in your diff is just use your little finger and put it just over the top. You can see that that is nice and full and you can even sort of inspect what that oil looks like. That is a little bit milky and it sort of leads me on to my next point is when should you change your diff oil? Now the recommendation is every 20,000 kilometres but if you do a lot of four wheel drive and you go through a lot of mud I definitely recommend you do it um, a lot sooner so I try to, try to change mine every 10,000 kilometres. Um, that's open now, let's drain the diff. Oh. Now if you have a look at the colour of that oil, you can see that it's very, very milky. That means that um, I have been going through a fair bit of mud lately, so it does make sense. That oil definitely needs a, ch needs a change. 
diff oil when it comes out, if it is quite clean, should, you should be able to see through it and it shouldn't be that sort of milky colour. Now, another thing you want to do is when you do take that drain plug out of your diff, is you want to inspect it because it does have a magnetic end and you want to be looking for any little bits of metal which can uh, be a telltale sign that you have got um, wear on your differential gears. For the rear diff, you need to work out if you've got an LSD. You can find this info from your owner's manual. This is because you need a different grade of oil if you haven't or don't have an LSD. Draining your manual gearbox is the same process and you want to check for metal pieces as well. For the manual gearbox and four-wheel drive transfer case, we're using Castrol Universal 80W90 gear oil, designed to provide superior gear shift performance over a wide temperature range, particularly cold shift performance. Just like the drain plug on your diffs, there's a little magnet on the bottom of your transfer case drain plug, and um, that's where you can see if any little bits of metal shavings have accumulated. Um, this doesn't look too bad at all, but if you did have a stack of metal on there, um, you definitely have to seek repairs because something is not right inside that box and it means that it is um, mechanically not right. Um, another little tip as well, when you do put your drain plug back in, make sure you don't over tighten. That's where a lot of people go wrong. They, they jump on a big wrench and really tighten those ones up. You don't need to tighten these very much at all and um, it'll make getting to it next time a heck of a lot easier. Filling them up is simple as putting the drain plug back in, removing the filler plug and using an oil syringe like this to put the oil back in. Once the oil starts trickling back out the filler hole, you've reached the full level and can do the plug back up. Draining your auto transmission is much more involved and it's best to get an approved workshop to do it for you. Reason is, there's many types of automatic transmissions and they require a power flush to remove all the old and dirty oil from the entire system. As draining from the sump alone will at best only remove half of the contents of the transmission. Also, with your auto transmission, check the old oil that comes out and pay special attention to the colour and smell. If it looks dark and smells burnt, then chances are your auto has been getting too hot and you might need to look at adding a bigger oil cooler. How good's that? Oil change on the 79 series is done. In two hours I've changed every single oil. And um, there's something about doing the job yourself. You get a sense of satisfaction in doing it, not to mention you save a stack of money. Now's the clean up time. So grab a rag, clean all your tools, wipe them all down. And um, I've got a neat little trick as well about disposing of your old oil. So chances are you've got a couple of empty oil cans lying around from changing your oil. Get all the old oil that's in your oil pan and basically put it into those empty containers and write on it with a um, permanent marker, old oil, and then dispose them down at your local tip. Well, there you go, job all done. And that didn't take very long at all to change all the oils in the 79 series here. And the fact that I was able to do it at home in my own shed with some basic hand tools, well, it makes that job really easy. And you don't need to be a master mechanic to give a job like this a go. And you have the satisfaction that not only did it yourself, but also your vehicle is in tip top shape because you've used the best oils and you've done the routine maintenance that you need to do on a vehicle just like that. Now, before I end this one, I just want to give you a red hot tip. I'm going to go for a quick drive around the block now and just check the oil after I'm done, just to make sure those oil levels are absolutely fine. And then I know that my vehicle is mechanically sound. Has this video made you want to service your four-wheel drive at home? Well, we've organized a cracking giveaway with our mates at Castrol. Win one of three oil packs, including a year's worth of engine, transmission, and diff oils for your four-wheel drive. To enter, head to our Facebook or Instagram page at Full Wheel Drive 24 7 and follow the instructions. Good luck! If you've got any tips you might use when changing your oil, enter them in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe to the best Full Wheel Drive channel on YouTube for more of the best DIY and Full Wheel Drive content. See you out in the tracks!